Hello, welcome to our time of daily prayer and reflection. My name is Rich Schmidt, one of the pastors at Living Hope Community Church. Uh, since this is Thankful Thursday, why don't we start with this prayer of thanks from the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. I don't think I'll ever get tired of that prayer. We have so much to be thankful for. I continue to encourage you to make a list, or to keep adding to your list, of things you're thanking God for. Uh, just recently I've been thankful for the chance to see family on Memorial Day, for the beautiful weather, uh, for the fact that my sunburns haven't been too bad, have gone away quickly, and, and for living three blocks from a pizza place. That came in very handy yesterday when the boys wanted pizza for lunch. Uh, oh, and I was thankful that a meeting I was in recently uh, was masks optional for those who are vaccinated because it meant a lot of us could go without masks and see each other's faces again. Uh, I'll be sending an email out about that to our church list later today to let people know that on Sunday mornings, we ask people to wear masks when coming and going and walking around, but once you're to your spot where you'll be seated for the service, still socially distanced from other people, you can feel free to remove your mask for the service. Uh, as more and more people are vaccinated, we get closer and closer to being done with this whole thing, and I'm thankful for that too. But above everything else, as we just mentioned in that prayer, we are thankful for the immeasurable love that God has shown us in His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, this thought led me down a trail of reflecting on a whole lot of scripture this morning. I invite you to reflect on these with me. Uh, we have in our Bibles three letters from John. And then the first one he says in chapter 3, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Uh, later in the chapter it says, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. In chapter 4, he says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. A few verses later, he says it again, God is love. Over and over, the Bible makes love the defining characteristic of God and of God's people. Those of us whose lives have been transformed by his love are becoming a people of love. We see this from the beginning of the Bible all the way through to the end. When Jesus was asked, which of the 600 plus commandments that God had given to his people Israel, which of them was the most important? Here was his answer. The most important one answered Jesus is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. He quotes from Deuteronomy and from Leviticus and pulls out the two commandments to love and joins them together in this inseparable whole. We love God and we love our neighbors. And in other places he says that the way we love God is by loving our neighbors. Do you remember Matthew 25 where Jesus says that whenever we feed the hungry, clothe the naked, care for the sick and imprisoned, when we care for our fellow human beings in need, we are doing it for him. We are serving Christ by serving our neighbors in need. Love God, love your neighbor. No commandment greater than these. Or in Matthew's gospel, Jesus says, all the law and the prophets hang on these two commands. The apostle Paul says something similar in his letter to the Galatians. He says, the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. And in his letter to the Romans, whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. 
the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be, are summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. And of course, Jesus said to his disciples, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. As he loved us, we love each other. This marks us as belonging to him, as his disciples, learning from him how to live in a way that honors God, how to be human beings in the world that God has created. He has loved us, so we love each other. Uh, let's join our hearts together in these prayers. Almighty God, grant that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Give us all a reverence for your earth, for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We commend to your mercy all who have died and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Now let's pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.